This latest video is a postulation of how we could come closer to creating a living cell from the chemistry of the primordial earth. I happen to be a big fan of the Miller-Urey experiment. I think that Miller and Urey did a great job in replicating some of the elements of the prebiotic earth. In their experiment, they replicated the water cycle as well as the effect of lightning on atmospheric gases. To be fair to them, they didn't know everything that we know today about all of the different factors which were involved in creating the first living cell from chemistry. In this illustration, I have proposed a new and improved version of the same experiment, adding new elements which were not included in the original experiment. I simply do not have the resources to conduct this experiment myself, and so unfortunately, you won't see this version of the experiment on my channel. As you can see, I have the basic setup of the original experiment, along with several modifications. First of all, I think that the addition of UV light at 254 nanometers is necessary because our best understanding of the conditions of the primordial Earth is that it did not contain any free oxygen which means it had no ozone layer. This means that all of the high energy UV radiation which is blocked by our current atmosphere would have been able to make its way to the surface, bathing the surface of our planet with high energy radiation which would have created compounds of biological significance including the nucleotide bases. As I demonstrated in one of my experiments, when formamide is exposed to high heat and UV radiation, it forms the purine nucleotides. I have also included a prim primordial ocean substrate, which consists of montmorillonite clay, an excellent catalyst for the creation of biological molecules, as well as other minerals. In the prebiotic ocean, there was obviously an ocean floor, which contained many minerals which would act as catalysts in the creation of biological molecules. You will also notice that I have formaldehyde included in my primordial soup. This would be a source of the sugar ribose, which would then combine with the nucleotide bases as well as the phosphates provided by sodium pyrophosphate to form nucleosides. Also, the primordial ocean which Miller and Urey used in the original experiment was not complex enough, in my view. In a time in Earth's history when the atmosphere contained no oxygen, meteorites from outer space would have crashed into Earth and over time they would have leached their contents into the primordial ocean. This would have created an organic soup of chemicals which Miller and Urey did not add to their ocean. These chemicals which included Formamide, formaldehyde, and others would react under the influence of high energy UV rays as well as heating and cooling cycles and cycles of evaporation and rehydration and they would cause the synthesis of nucleotide bases as well as the linkage of amino acids to form peptides. Also, hydrothermal vents on the ocean floor as well as the source of hot springs deep beneath the earth would have been the source of fatty acids and other lipid compounds. In the experiment I have an autoclave attached to this apparatus. In my proposed experiment, after releasing most of the pressure from the autoclave, the lipid compounds which were formed from carbon monoxide and hydrogen would be able to rise into the primordial ocean increase in concentration over time, and form lipid vesicles. These lipid vesicles would then be free to encapsulate the nucleotide bases as well as other compounds produced in this experiment. The lipid vesicles would be also be protected from the osmotic pressure of the surrounding environment by the incorporation of amino acids which would have been produced from the lightning discharge acting on the gases of the early atmosphere. This is my latest idea about how you can get a living cell from chemistry. 
I don't have the resources to conduct this experiment at this time, as well as the necessary safety measures in place. And so for me, this will reside only in the realm of theory. But maybe one day, a scientist will be inspired by my ideas and conduct a version of this experiment in their lab. So I just want to thank everyone for watching, and stay tuned for my next video. Thank you.